Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jesse Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please make sure you have your notes that accompany this lesson in your textbook in your notebook ready so that you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for listening to this lesson. This lesson covers the RN nursing care for ear and hearing disorders to include conditions affecting the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to provide a description of auditory problems with a focus on the pathophysiology, the clinical manifestations, and the nursing management of these disorders. You should be able to conduct patient teaching that includes approaches to protect ears, methods of medication administration, and the use of hearing aids. You should be able to assist patient and family to communicate when hearing loss has occurred in an as as an important intervention to be included in the care planning. The ears are important for the sense of hearing and for balance. Ear disorders can cause many problems ranging from hearing difficulty to problems of balance and functional ability leading to confusion, mistrust, social isolation, and the inability to give their and receive information accurately. Disorders of the ear and of hearing are often easily treated with proper diagnosis. However, early detection and intervention are necessary to prevent the additional damage and to promote a maximal level of wellness. The nurse needs to remember that disorders of the external ear include congenital malformations, trauma, and infections and non-infections non-infectious lesions of the pinna, the auricle, and the auditory canal. Use contact precautions with any patients who has drainage from the ear canal and avoid performing any otoscopic exams on confused and uncooperative patients. In reviewing ear disorders, we'll begin with conditions affecting the external ear. The first one we're going to talk about external otitis. It is a painful condition caused from irritating or infectious agents that come into contact with the skin of the external ear. Here's another picture of otitis externa. Treatment focuses on reducing the inflammation, the edema, as we can see here, and the pain through topical antibiotics, steroids, and comfort measures. You want to teach this patient the proper way to clean uh, the pinna and the external ear canal. The next thing we're going to talk about is uh, foruncle. A foruncle is a localized external otitis caused by a bacterial infection like Staphylococcus aureus. You can see that in there. Um, uh, uh, it's going to be an infection of a, a hair fo follicle or by inserting inappropriate objects into your in ear canal. The treatment for this is going to be local and it's going to can be systemic antibiotics or heat application depending on the spread. The next thing we're going to talk about is going to be perichondritis. Perichondritis is caused by ear piercings or contact sports. It's an infection of the perichondrium, a tough fibrous tissue layer that surrounds the cartilage and gives shape to the pinna. The treatment for perichondritis is going to consist of systemic antibiotic therapy and often a wide incision is made in, so that you can incise and drain the infection as seen here. Okay, A foreign body or cerumen in the ear is the most common um, cause of an impacted ear canal, uh, although it can also occur with uh, foreign bodies that enter, but usually it's uh, uh, all that wax buildup in the ear canal um, that people do, and children especially, do insert vegetables and beads and pencil erasers and insects into their ears um, uh, or insects enter the ear. Removal of the obstruction uh, by irrigation uh, is slow but may improve hearing. Uh, you do not want to irrigate an ear with an eardrum perforation or otitis media present. When the foreign object is a vegetable, 
matter because the material may expand and when it's wet inside the ear so it's it may just not work as good okay so that's a little bit of a summary of conditions affecting the external ear Well, we'll next give an overview of conditions that affect the middle ear, beginning with the picture of otitis media here we have in the picture. The three most common forms of otitis media are acute otitis media, chronic otitis media, and serous otitis media. Each type affects the middle ear but has slightly different causes, incidences, and pathological changes. And if untreated, it may result in permanent conductive hearing loss. You want to use a separate speculum cover for each ear when you're conducting an otoscopic exam on these patients. You want to slowly and gently introduce the otoscope speculum into the ear canal uh, during assessment. You want to use contact precautions if there's any drainage uh, from the ear canal. You want to avoid perforating the otoscope uh, and you also want to avoid uh, want to avoid perforate, perforating the eardrum, but you also want to avoid inserting the otoscope in somebody who is confused and uncooperative. Uh, systemic antibiotic therapy is going to be what is recommended to reduce the inflammation, and the antihistamines and decongestants may be given to decrease the mucus production and fluid in the middle ear. Uh, you may also have an operative procedure that is used to remove the fluid and is usually done without anesthesia. The next one I want to talk about is mastoiditis. Mastoiditis, mastoiditis is an infection of the mastoid air cells caused by untreated or inadequately treated uh, otitis media. Okay, so we briefly want to talk about trauma to the ears, and trauma to the ears uh, may happen. Uh, damage may occur to the eardrum or the ossicles by infection, by direct damage, or through a rapid change in the middle ear cavity pressure. Last but not least, on the middle ear, we want to talk about neoplasms. Uh, tumors of the middle ear are very rare, but the most common is the glomus jugular. Uh, and the glomus jugular is a highly vascular benign lesion arising from the jugular vein and its cancerous uh, cancerous ear tumors include the adeno adenocarcinoma and the adeno adenoid cystic carcinoma and uh, other carcinomas um, which may uh, disrupt conductive hearing and erode the ossicles and may cause may spread the inner ear into nearby cranial nerves. Let's now talk about conditions that affect the inner ear. Uh, tinnitus is a continuous ringing or noise perception in the ear. Um, diagnostic testing cannot confirm tinnitus, but it is used to assess hearing and rule out other ear and hearing disorders. Uh, when no cause can be found or the disorder is untreatable, therapy focuses on the way to mask the tinnitus and uh, to block it out and so that the patient can sleep uh, in rest. Okay, vertigo and dizziness are common manifestations of ear disorders. Uh, dizziness is a disturbance in the sense of person's relationship to space. And true vertigo is re uh, a real sense of work, like something is turning in space. Many patients are dissatisfied with treatment because side effects of the drugs, especially drowsiness, can be worse. Uh, uh, drowsiness can be worse than vertigo. You want to use full precautions with these patients. You want to assist with ambulation. You want to maintain a safe environment. You want to make sure that the environment is uncluttered. You want to make sure that they have a cane and walker for balance. And also they cannot drive and operate machinery if this is what they're experiencing. Labyrinthitis is an infection of the labyrinth, which may um, occur as a complication of acute or chronic otitis media. So there is that inflamed labyrinth in the picture there. Uh, labyrinthitis is often uh, from the growth of uh, coleosteotoma, a benign overgrowth of the squamous cell epithelium from the middle ear um, uh, into the semicircular canal. Treatment of the disease includes systemic antibiotics. Meniere's disease has three features that we want to talk about. Tinnitus, one-sided sensory neurohearing loss, and vertigo. Those are key to remember and uh, occurring in attacks that last for seven, several days. The exact cause of Meniere's disease is unknown, but it is often uh, 
happens with infections, allergic reactions, fluid imbalances, and long-term stress. Treatment is going to be dietary and lifestyle, avoiding smoking and drug therapy. In non-surgical treatment, uh, maybe uh, use of a device, it's called a maniac device, believed to be uh, to displace fluid from the inner ear and relieving the symptoms. Radical therapy involves resection of the vestibular nerve um, or to totally remove the, uh, the labyrinth uh, uh, performed through the ear canal. Okay, Acoustic neuroma is a benign tumor of the cranial nerves uh, which uh, may impact hearing, facial movements, and sensation and it, as it grows. Acoustic neuromas are diagnosed with CT and MRI, and surgical removal is a craniotomy is performed. Okay. It's important for the nurse to remember that hearing loss is one of the most common handicaps in Northern America. It may be conductive, it may be sensory neural, it may be a mixture. We talked about conductive hearing loss and we talked about sensory neural hearing loss. It's important that you review those things. It's important that you understand the anatomy and physiology of ears so that you're able to understand this. When you're taking care of a patient with hearing loss, you want to ask the patient about the hearing problems and you want to make sure you get the family history. You want to take, teach them the properly how to properly care for their hearing aids if they have had those prescribed. Uh, you want to tell patients who engage in water sports and who are at risk for external otitis to either wear earplugs when in water or to rinse the ear canal with drops of dilute alcohol after immersion in, uh, in water. You want to instruct patients uh, to avoid closing off uh, of, their near, uh, of one ear when uh, blowing their nose. Uh, you want to teach patients uh, proper uh, ear hygiene and uh, how to remove the earwax from the external canal. You want to avoid, um, uh, you want to avoid, have patients avoid exposure to loud noises for extended periods of time unless they're wearing OSHA approved ear protection. You want to explain diagnostic uh, procedures that a patient has been prescribed. You want to teach proper technique for installing eardrops and ear irrigation. You want to stress the importance of completing antibiotics when somebody has an ear infection. Thank you for listening to this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this review of the RN Nursing Care for Ear and Hearing Disorders that included the conditions affecting the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. If you have any questions about this lesson or the corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. Have a lovely day.